Good evening from Boston. Buenas noches. It is my pleasure to be here with you. Tonight, we are closing a series of, of webinars for Black History Month. So happy Black History Month to all of you who are present here. Um, I'm accompanied by some wonderful panelists who you are going to get to know more about them in a minute. My name is Rafael Trujillo. I'm an assistant director for intercultural recruitment at Emerson College. I'm also an Emerson alum. So I graduated from Emerson with my bachelor's of science in journalism and a master's in political communication. So extremely happy to be here. I recruited in New Mexico, Florida, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. And I also have Central America and South America, including Mexico. So really happy to be here. Along with me, um, I have the wonderful uh, Dr. Roberts, uh, who going to first introduce herself, and also Chris Grant. So good evening, and thank you both. Thank you so much, Rafael. Uh, hi, good evening. My name is Dr. Tuesday Roberts. I am the Director for Faculty Development and Diversity here at Emerson. My position is situated in the Office of Internationalization and Equity. Emerson is an international college. We have a campus in the Netherlands. We also, <clears throat> we have, there's a third campus uh, in, uh, in, in Los Angeles that we send our students out to for internships and all kinds of programs. We also <clears throat> receive international students and scholars. And so part of the office um, that I'm a part of supports those students uh, with pre-orientation and ongoing support um, as they navigate school, um, as they navigate life here on campus and in Boston. We also sponsor through this office, uh, World Languages Week. We sponsor the annual Teach Them on Race. We um, also specifically connected to my position um, we offer support for faculty uh, in terms of thinking about how faculty prepare their content to represent all of the wonderful diversity um, that's present historically and um, currently. <clears throat> so thinking about um, students that may be coming from different parts of the world, but also different regions, even in the U.S., um, thinking about how we prepare our faculty to um, to, to create welcoming and uh, exciting and engaging learning environments that will help our students not only receive a rig rigorous uh, professional training, but also how do we do so in a way that acknowledges their full humanity. So thinking about their, uh, their how can they bring in their ancestry or their aims that they bring with them for how they want to use the education that they're receiving. Uh, that's really important. And so in my role, I provide one-on-one -on -one consultation with faculty members who are proactively thinking about those questions. But we also, um, I also support them if something has gone wrong. Um, and so there's some things that have gone, if there's like a break in trust or there's um, some mishandling of information around social and cultural topics, I'm also a resource for faculty. <clears throat> so uh, finally, I... I manage the Diversity Fellows Program, which is an internal grant for our faculty to rethink um, their curriculum. Um, so they, they come with a plan and they want to diversify or, inter or include international perspectives in their, in their curriculum. Um, we, I also co-manage with my supervisor, Dr. Tony Pender, the Presidential Fund for Curricular Innovation that has a similar purpose, but has a broader scope and offers a deeper le level of support. All of this to say, the office that I'm a part of um, is, is one that hopefully um, you and um, and uh, you and your family will, will come to know as uh, wonderful opportunities to think about how your experiences here at Boston, here in Emerson, could give you not only wonderful experiences in the classroom, where your whole self, where your culture, where your diversity can find a home, but also maybe there are ways in which you may want to study abroad and and would want to find ways to take those interests and those passions and those skills that you have and study in a different in a different country, in a different culture. We also can help you find money for that if that's a, if that's a question. Please don't take yourself out of that because education doesn't just happen in the classroom. Education doesn't just happen in the U.S. Knowledge is worldwide. Wisdom is worldwide. Professional training is worldwide, and we want you to know that um, we are here to support all of you. Um, to, to explore all of those possibilities. Awesome. Um, hello, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Chris Grand. I use the He Series. Um, I'm one of the directors in the Office of Student Success. Um, it's one of the offices that helps to focus on 
well-being, um, access, belonging, um, and hopefully just helping you to get through um, your Emerson experience. Um, I've been at Emerson for about 16 years, used to work in an undergraduate admission, um, and then now I've switched over to this side of the desk for the past eight years, um, focusing and um, and working with students with a variety of needs, challenges, um, and help, hopefully help you get into a place of success. Um, um, I, I like to say jokingly, but I mean this with all seriousness. I, I, every day that I walk into Emerson, I try to live up to the, my job title um, and our office title and really trying to make sure that students, um, as they think about Emerson, as they go through the Emerson journey, um, as it becomes more real, um, more than just what you see on the web page, more than what you're getting out of webinars, more than just the things that we send you via email, um, we want to make sure that it really lives up to what you expect it to be. Um, and that honestly, that you get that return on that investment from the time that you walk in to the time that you walk out. Um, and we're that office to help to kind of be that bridge um, within for you. Um, we never want to tell you what to do, but work with you um, and tailor fit whatever you want your experience to be um, and hopefully try to make it um, become that. Um, so our office is really designed um, to look at some of those academic, social, emotional, financial um, needs and challenges that might pop up and might arise um, and figure out ways um, and figure out what are the programs and resources and services that we need to have in-house um, and also to work in partnership with, with uh, uh, our other offices to make sure you feel that network of support um, throughout your time. Um, in our office, uh, we have a few programs. One being uh, that you might hear about uh, for, um, in the next few months, it's called Immersion. Uh, and that is a one, um, a one credit course that you will take um, either during the summer or during the fall uh, before you enter um, and or while you enter uh, that will help to provide some insight to some of the things that might come up um, during your time at Emerson. Um, and so we focus on a variety of things, variety of tips um, and strategies that can help you to get through those um, sort of hard, hard months um, and make it less of an uphill battle. Um, we want to make sure that um, nothing is cloaked and veiled um, at Emerson and try to um, bring about just a little bit more transparency. So you know what's going on. So you know what the Emerson microcosm is like and how you can fit within that, um, but then also figure out ways in, in, in which you can add to the environment as well. Um, and so um, that's something that you that will come up. It's a great course to take over the summer before you arrive, um, so you have a good understanding of what you're walking into. And so you'll get additional information about that, highly recommend that, but of course you can take it during the fall. Um, it's just a couple of times per week and you finish up in about seven weeks um, during the fall. Um, and um, I highly recommend that. Um, also, um, just in terms of the things that I do within um, the office through access and belonging, uh, we run a first generation program for students who are, will be first in their family uh, to either go to or graduate the college. And so we have a resource um, where students can come meet each other, um, meet our staff members, and just get tips again, um, just get that insight. Um, so if you are sort of taking that baton from your family, um, and trudging forward um, and sort of uh, creating your own path. We want to help to, to be that guide uh, with you. Uh, we want to sort of be that guiding light um, for you. And just so that you don't feel as if you're lost, you don't feel as if you have to go about this on your own. Um, we say that even though you are first, you are not alone. And we want to make sure that you're um, getting this degree with Emerson um, and that you're not um, just an Emerson ID number, just kind of walking aimlessly um, throughout campus. So let us know what you need. Uh, we run workshops um, every month and socials so that you get to meet each other. Um, first generation is one of those um, hidden diversities that you really don't see. Um, not many people wear that as sort of like a t-shirt um, or uh, you see that um, uh, on the exterior. Uh, but we want other students to know each other. Um, and know that they have the support um, needed to, to be able to get through. Um, we also run um, a few programs uh, dealing with financial um, and food insecurity. So students, when they're coming to Emerson, they might not realize this, the level of um, finances that they actually do need. And so we try to be a support uh, for students um, who might be facing some challenges. So we have an in-office food pantry. Um, available for students on and off campus. Uh, we have a student assistance fund, which is an emergency-based fund uh, for students who might be meet, um, facing some 
um, sudden changes um, in their finances, sudden changes to their family circumstances, and need just a bit of help just to get them through. And we have that available. Um, and then we also, um, that we just started, uh, restarted up is uh, the Men of Color Initiative. So students who um, identify as a male and a man of color, uh, we run a, a program for, uh, for students as a community of staff, faculty, students, and um, and hopefully alumni um, that will come together, meet, and again, just to build that community and just to know that you're not alone. Um, and so, and almost counterintuitive to what we do um, as far as retention um, in Office of Student Success, uh, we also um, uh, service those who might be thinking about leaving, um, taking a, um, a, a leave of absence or withdrawing uh, from the college, but we also want to make that um, as smooth as possible. So in, in, in essence, our office is there to help you to succeed um, as a human, not just as a student, um, not just as an Emerson student, but really just trying to make sure that we can address your, address your need we try to make sure that we can we can talk to you one on one um, and whether that's meeting us in the office over Zoom, over the phone, through emails, you can contact us um, at any time. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to us even before you arrive about some of the services um, that we offer. And I'll just drop into the into the chat um, our um, our Web page just so you can see some of the services that we have to offer. And um, uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to meeting you very soon. Thank you, Tuzan, Chris. That's a wonderful presentation of the work that you do and your departments are engaged. And once again, to all of the um, attendees tonight, thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to use the Q&A bots to submit those questions so our wonderful panelists can answer them and also give you a little bit more content. So there was a lot of good information shared. Um, and I want to speak specifically about belonging. Um, as we know, we have students from all over the world um, and also all over the United States. So under different communities, you have your community inside of the classroom for those people who might be within your same major, meeting people from other majors in those liberal art courses. And you also have those extracurricular, those clubs that are going to be there to support you. So if Tucson want to go first and then Chris, how have you seen that faculty, you know, are creating those opportunities inside of the classroom for community and for Chris, similar concept, different, you know, first generation um, and also men of color community, the different communities have been creating um, to make sure that you feel like you belong at Emerson? It's a wonderful question. One of the things that, um, that I do is I, um, I offer workshops on creating community in the classroom that is um, inclusive and engaging. <clears throat> and so that workshop allows faculty to get a primer on what inclusive pedagogy, what anti-oppressive pedagogy means. And, and, and so thinking about um, what they do in the classroom, what they teach, why they teach, how they teach is really important. Most of the time, questions that may come to me um, Mm, they may range, right? So it may be, um, <clears throat> excuse me, forgive me, I'm feeling a little under the weather, forgive me. Um, questions that may come to me around creating community um, are about how can I make sure my, my, my curriculum is representative, right? So thinking about how do we make sure the voices of women are present? How do we make sure that if we're gonna talk about a historical era that um, was painful, how do we do that in a way that honors the legacies um, and um, the wisdom of, of those cultures, of those communities. How do we handle that in a way that, that is respectful? So we have, some, we have some wonderful faculty members here, some of whom um, I'm thinking of Sharifa Simon Roberts, who teaches intercultural communication, who takes her students. Um, in, in addition to thinking about communication and, and discussing um, you know, how to have conversations across areas of difference. She also takes her students around um, to different sites in Boston, right, to, to actually learn about some of the culture that we have here. Most people remember or, or know that we are right on the Boston Common, but on the other side of Boston Common, um, if anyone has seen the movie Glory, um, the, the place where those soldiers would have signed up is literally on the other side of Boston Common. Um, it's it's the, it's um, called the African Meeting House, and so she um, she she takes her students around. So I, that's one example. 
But one of the things that um, that comes up is about curriculum, but it's also just how do we make room? Because we can't anticipate all of the different languages and cultures and ancestries that may come in, but we can anticipate making room for them, right? Um, so that's one of the ways that I see faculty um, fostering community. I also uh, offer a workshop on community agreements, learning community agreements. And um, that went over pretty well this past, um, this earlier this semester. And the main difference um, that I, I, I hope that would benefit students um, is that I was telling faculty members, there's a difference between learning alongside someone versus learning with someone. And if I'm gonna learn with someone, I need to take the time to actually learn about them and to, to learn <clears throat> together, figure out how do we how do we do this thing together? We don't have to end up with the same thoughts. We don't even have to enter with the same opinions, but how can we learn together and grow together? And so then it, it shifts from being a classroom, which as, as a lifelong educator, um, that's important to me. I consider the classroom to be a very special space, but truthfully, it's not a magical space that once you cross the doors, everyone knows how to get along and everybody knows what to do. <clears throat> so shifting from a classroom perspective into a learning community perspective. That means then let's, we need to see each other. We need to endeavor to understand each other. We need to learn how to work together, but also community has to be developed. Just because we're in the same space at the same time doesn't mean that we are a community. And so I work with faculty to help them think about over the course of a semester, how do you foster a sense of community um, among your students? Awesome. Um, the uh, the uh, access and belonging and um, is a part of my title, um, and it is something that I think long and hard about. Um, just in terms of what does that actually mean? How does that really work in real time? It's it's great hashtag stuff. It's great hashtag stuff that you can put on Instagram. It's good stuff that you can do. We can build uh, conferences around and all that great stuff. But at the end of the day, it's you um, and how you feel. Um, and anytime that we have conversations with students, just in terms of making sure that you feel that sense of belonging, number one is um, finding that comfort within yourself and knowing who you are, um, what you stand for, um, the things that you are willing to accept, the things that you are not willing to accept um, as well, and making sure um, that you understand that a lot of this stuff is going to be really organic. Um, when you're walking into college, you're going to be walking in sort of as a sort of a fresh new person, walking into a new environment. For some of you, walking into a totally brand new city, meeting new people that you have, for the, for the most part, have never met before um, from backgrounds that um, might be different from yours. Um, and so there is... Sometimes there's a level of comfort within that. You're like, cool. And there's, you know, I can walk into a space. No one knows me. No one knows, um, you know, knows me when I was six years old. Cool. I've got, I've got that as a fresh slate. Then for those, it can be a little bit daunting. You're like, oh my God, how am I going to make friends? How am I going to be, you know, build this, um, this community, a new one? I had my set of friends that I probably grew up when I was in kindergarten, all the way up till, um, till through twelfth grade. Now I have to figure this whole thing out as this new person, this new college student, this new Emerson student. Um, and honestly, bring your full self. Um, belonging doesn't happen when you don't bring your full self to the space. Also recognizing that you're probably going to change um, throughout that particular process as well. So give yourself that allowance to change as well. Um, give yourself that space and that grace to be able to, 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 to change, to make mistakes, for other people to make mistakes as well, because that's that's going to happen um, as a result of brand new people coming into in, into brand new spaces. Um, but also make sure that you're putting yourself out there. Um, you know, you a lot of people think that it's like okay, it's going to happen on the first day, and then um, that I'm either going to make my friend or I'm not going to make my my um, make my friends, and then that's it. That's not the case. <laughs> These things happen over time. As you reflect back um, and think back on your friends, the people that you've met, people who have come and gone out of your life, it has come over a period of time and it's come through seasons. Um, so walk into spaces with your full self, but make sure that you are putting yourself out there. Make sure that you are going to spaces where um, you're, you're 
attending things like immersion, um, if I can advertise that again. If you're um, going to pre-orientation, going through orientation, um, checking out the org, um, orgs at work fair. Um, these are the things that you're going to, we have an organization fair um, that is um, created by students who are running organizations. And, and it's almost like a, it's like a fair where you can window shop and meet people. You're going to meet people within your department with the same ideas and passions that you have, whether it's marketing, film, performing arts, um, or you might be an extra, extrovert or an introvert. I'm an introvert, um, naturally. And so there's people that you might be able to meet who might be a little bit more quiet and prefer more quiet things. And you're like, okay, cool, we're going to be buddies. There's people that you're going to meet within your dorm, within your floor. Um, there's floor meetings that you will have within the dorms as well. So there's a lot of different types of engagement. Um, and I think that's sort of the beauty of going to arts and communications uh, school, honestly. Um, it's awesome that you get to meet people who have the same passions, but do it in a variety of different ways. Um, and so you'll be able to meet your people. Um, you'll be able to meet your flock. Um, but it is really honestly putting yourself out there um, and making sure that you give 100% of yourself. You never diminish yourself um, at, um, in terms of meeting these people. So you feel as if you're getting the most out of them and they're getting the most out of you. Then you will truly feel as if like, okay, great. I have people that I, I truly have some belonging for, um, belonging with. I really feel as if I can be 100% myself and I don't feel as if I fractured myself in order to fit in. Don't do that. Um, even though college might seem like the, the best place to do that, those can have some damaging effects. So make sure that you are whole as you're walking through this process as well. And then even if you do feel as if there's a part of you that is not fully connected, there are spaces to be able to talk, um, whether it's going to the counseling services or going to um, speaking with staff and faculty, healing and advocacy, and those types of spaces where you can have honest conversations about how you are feeling. Make sure that you don't sit with it. Make sure you don't um, um, cover it. Um, and feel as if it's like, okay, um, and, and, and especially anytime that you feel as if you are not, you're not feeling quite yourself, that you address those things. You are your best barometer. And make sure that you recognize like, hey, I'm feeling off. I need to be able to talk to somebody. I need to be around more people. And also make sure you keep those connections from home as well. As much as connections that you're going to make at Emerson, you're going to build a wonderful, beautiful community at Emerson. Make sure that you keep some of those um, those safe spaces that you've created from home. Build those, keep those connections as well, whether it's your parents, your siblings, best friends, whomever. Um, make sure that you continue to keep those because um, that's going to provide some balance, especially um, during your first year. Chris, you are so right. I literally was in a conversation with faculty and administration last week, and I was saying, our students, what's, what's special about what, I, what we're trying to do here at Emerson is that we want students to be very much fully prepared to go into their professions. But unlike some other spaces that I've been in in higher education, we want to make sure that our students can get prepared for their job, for their professions without losing their dignity, without their spirit being damaged. Um, and so I am so appreciative that I'm able to have those types of conversations openly with faculty and administrators. I'd also like to just echo Chris's point about um, getting out there, meeting the, meeting people, um, saying true to yourself, right? We don't want you to diminish yourself, but sometimes what hurts the most um, is when a student will come up to, on the floor and they're just looking for anybody. And they yeah. would have heard, they said, they might say, well, I heard about this office, but I never came here and I'm a junior and I've really been having some difficult times and I don't, I didn't know who to reach out to. I heard about you in orientation. I just never came. And it's like, wow. And we immediately will scoop them up, right? What do you need? Yes. Let's, let's triage what's going on, right? Because as Chris's um, office offers, if there is food insecurity, let's take care of that, right? If there's, um, there, there's, um, Chris, I can't remember the exact name of it, but there's a fund, like if there's some, if there's a small emergency. Yeah, student um, assistance fund. Student assistance fund. Um, if it's a matter of, I, I'm in my department and I don't know who to connect to. One of the beautiful things about sitting where I do in the, in the college is, even though I don't know all of the faculty members, 
I know folks in, in the departments that I would have absolutely no problems, no worries sending students to because I trust them. I've seen them at work. I know they care about students. Um, and so I would encourage all of you to, to think about how the networking is not just about your career, but it's also about how to find those communities, how to find people who will see you for who you are. Um, and, before it and before it gets to a crisis point, know that there are people here. I One of the driving forces behind what I do and, and the collaborations I, I do with Chris and others here on campus is because when I was an, an, under, when I was an undergrad student, I had four faculty members that I really felt like I could let myself just be myself. And none of them were in my department, not a one. <laughs> um, and yet even now, because I, I, I forced myself to, to talk to them and they welcomed me, even today, I'm not gonna tell you when I graduated, but even today, if I went to them, to went to their homes, I could go in, put my feet up on the couch and they would fix me a plate of food. That's the value, right? That's what motivates me here because I see wonderful students who are so talented and they're, they're just, they're, they're, they're seeking and they're growing and you need someone who can foster that growth, who can encourage you, who can see you for who you are. Um, and so one of the joys I have and, and others in my office like Taikisha Morgan or Samantha Ivory is that if we find out not even that a student is in crisis, but just that a student has an interest. This is who you need to talk to. Oh, you're interested in music? Oh, I need you to go over to WERS, tell Maurice that, that we sent you. Matter of fact, I'll send an email before you get there. And that's one of the beautiful things about, um, about working here at Emerson that I have really found great, great joy in. Thank you both. Thank you for those. Uh words and, and really encouraging and motivating all of our students um, that are the ones that are coming and the ones that are already here. And I think this offered me a wonderful opportunity to speak about mentorship. Um, just to continue elaborating, um, I heard wonderful feedback from students about both of you uh, and the support that you provide the students. And, and your example to the is, is wonderful because it shows that it's not only people that are close to you within your program or your major, but it's the community as a whole. So can we speak a little bit more about what you have from faculty and how they are engaging in, in mentorship for students, providing those opportunities, um, seeking out for, for their students? And Chris, similar concept, but more on the staff side. Um, that you see WERS is a great example, but anything that you might want to share about those aspects of mentorship that you've seen on campus? Mm -hmm. So one of the um, things in terms of, of mentorship of students, I would encourage any student going into college to not only go into your courses in order to get a grade, we want, we want the grades, I mean, let's just be honest, we want the grades, um, but to focus on the learning. And that requires a greater sense of, of reflection on, on who you are and what you want to do with your learning, right? Information is one thing, learning is another, wisdom is, is even more different, right? So thinking about how you want to use the information and the learning that you are gaining here at Emerson will help you figure out who are the faculty members you need to be with. Not everybody is going to be in your department However, they have great connections in the city, right? You may have this one class with someone and you get to know them, but you need to stay in contact with them. One, because they can, they're really helpful in helping you navigate the college, right? Or navigate being in college or being away from home, or they have um, deep connections in the profession, whether they're local or they're not. Um, finding that person who, will help you, will remind you of just how awesome you are, right? I've, I've done that with some students. If you, just need a, if you just need a reminder of how good you are and how awesome you are, and you just need that boost, stop by my office anytime because you're amazing. And, um, you know, so I will say that mentoring 
does not need to be that one person. I would never want you to, to hinge your sense of success or your belonging on one person. I would say, think about who you are and what you want to do with your education and the type of person you want to be. And that's why it's important for you to get out into, into onto campus and, and think about people who are not just faculty members or just students, because you would then be able to kind of amass, I don't know, I don't know if you if, if you are a Justice League person or or whatever you're <laughs> like in the X-Men, I don't know, you get to assemble your team, right? Or the Avengers, whatever. You get to assemble your team according to the purposes that will allow you to reach the multiple goals that you may have for yourself, not just your career, but for yourself. No, absolutely. I know. I, I love that Marvel um, uh, analogy. Um, yeah, no, it's going to come in multi in, in different formats. Um, there's going to be different stages where you're going to have mentorship. It's going to, it, it's going to come in a variety of different ways. Um, one way, Initially, um, when you walk in, you're going to, especially during orientation, you're going to have OLs. You're going to have OLs, you're going to have RAs. You're going to have those folks who are going to be running your particular group for orientation and OLs are orientation leaders. And they're the ones who will be kind of guiding you through the process, uh, process, getting you to from one space to another. You'll see them on campus. They'll help you with move in and all the other kind of stuff. So they'll have student mentors. And so those ones who have um, gone through at least a year of the Emerson process and can then help to provide you with some insight of the things that they've gone through. That's gonna be one of the, um, the first steps. Next, next, it's gonna be academic advising. You're going to meet with academic advising. You're gonna have some folks that you're gonna connect with. Those who are gonna be able to give some, you some insight as it relates to your coursework and people that you might build a rapport with. Um, so, and all these people that I'm mentioning, these are people that you may not always be tight with. I'm not saying that you're going to be BFFs, that you're gonna get that you're gonna follow them on Instagram, none of that stuff. That This is this is all I'm just saying that these are the people that you're going to meet along the way that you might, um, build a rapport with, build a relationship with. But I just want to let you know, just so you can keep your eyes open and then just allow the um, the relationship to grow organically. Um, next, um, what I highly recommend and what a lot of students don't take advantage of um, is office hours for professors. Um, those things are going to be on your syllabus. You're going to get a syllabus. You're going to receive information regarding your class for the upcoming semester. It's going to give you information about the the um, coursework that you need, textbooks, um, your tests, all that other stuff is going to be laid out for you. On that, on that, and in other spaces, is only going to let you know when you can go see that particular professor and go to office hours. I can't tell you how many times that we've had conversations within our office where professors are just sitting there by themselves during their office hours because they have no one to talk to. Just know that they're lonely too. Just so that you know that you have an opportunity to cast away that loneliness. You can walk into that particular office and have a conversation. It could be either about the class, coursework, things that you love, things that you're having some challenges with, but also about what they do. A lot of uh, most of our professors are professionals in their field, um, and that's huge. And I think that's really exciting to have that someone who is sort of that connection. Uh, between you right now and the, and the field that you want to get into. And even just bringing up, hey, I'm just thinking about doing this in the communication field when I get out. I know that's many years away. Put it in their ear. Like you never know what that could stir up for, in, for them. It's like, you know what? I have a colleague that's doing that exact same thing. Make sure that you figure out your elevator pitch along the way so that when you're in front of people, that you can deliver that to them and then they can take that and be a messenger for you. Um, sometimes you can't work for yourself, but you can allow someone else to do the work for you. Some people have their foot in a door that you are, you are basically on, on the road of that house and that person can get you into that door. Be that invitation, be that 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 connection, and hold you and them through that door. So make sure that you are going to that. These professors and the department heads also do departmental events. Go to them, check them out, see who they're bringing in. If they're bringing alumni, other professionals, someone that is really connected to your field, make sure that you go into those things on and off campus. Um, and then there's alumni. We have um, our own LinkedIn, um, Aldi Merch. So you can create your own profile now. Well, at least when you when you get started at Emerson and you can build your profile 
and you can connect with other alums that might be in your field and they want to. I think that's the great thing about a lot of our alumni. They love connecting with other Emerson students because of the journey that you're going through. They have are also gone through and they know the education that you're going through is the same thing that they went through and knowing that you're a little smart cookie that they can bring to you, to your, to their um, realm and into their area, into their office space and knowing that you are not going to mess it up. You are actually going to add value to that space. So these are these are all, all different types of spaces, all different types of things that you will get including the staff and faculty in here. There's people with passions that you would never know. The people, even to um, Dr. Tuesday Roberts, there's things that she's doing outside of her work that she's like, you know what? Even just having a conversation with her, she'd be like, you know what? Come on, you know, I will get you into that space. Let's just have a conversation. And if I don't, even if I don't, I know somebody else that will. There's people who genuinely love their job and love and not just their job just because of their title but love helping people and that's that's what we get our satisfaction from so let us know what you need be vocal about it don't be shy about it never be shy of who and who you are and what you want to do uh, because the more that you throw that out the more you throw it out into the universe the more that you're confident you're like you know what i'm just going to throw darts and see what lands things will start flowing back to you so don't be afraid of that Rafael, if I may, you mentioned mentoring, but I think we also earlier we talked about belonging and I want to, uh, something I forgot to mention, the, a connection between belonging and access. So as a former high school teacher, um, I was accustomed to having, uh, to working with staff members who developed and helped students who had IEPs, individualized educational plans. The thing about going to college is those IEPs don't follow you, right? So if you needed through your IEP, you needed a separate testing space or you needed extended due dates or you needed your lectures to be recorded or you need whatever it may have been, right? Um, uh, visual impairment or hearing impairment, whatever it may be, right? Those things don't follow you to college. And no matter where you go to college, you will need to self-advocate all colleges will have an office. Um, ours is called the Student Accessibility Services Office. There it is, the link just popped in, thank you. Um, they have been wonderful allies when I, whenever I've, I've needed to contact them. Um, you, would, you would be able to work with, uh, you'd have one person that you would work with over time that would help you think about the accommodations you would need um, across your multiple courses. And I just wanna say, there is nothing wrong or shameful about going to SAS or getting those accommodations. The disabilities justice movement is a powerful one. If you haven't looked into that history, please do. People worked hard. People, people struggled and they fought um, for this office to still be a part right, of, of education because access, getting the access and the accommodations that you need is not a sign of weakness. It doesn't give you an unfair advantage. It makes it so that you have an equitable opportunity to prove to prove just how wonderful you are. I'm saying that because sometimes people who have a disability who who have gotten learning uh, accommodations in classrooms before coming to college. I just want you to know that you have you will need to self advocate. But there are some wonderful people there. You will be assigned to one person who will support you across your years here. And I don't want your sense of belonging or your sense of success here to hinge on you hiding something that is not shameful. And so I just wanted to bring that up because I think that's a, that's another aspect of, of belonging and access that don't always, that, you know, that topic doesn't always get brought up. No, thank you to say it was beautifully said. And just to spend a little bit more on, on that, the Student Accessibility Services is, is a wonderful resource on campus. You're going to be working with them. You can start working with them during the summer, communicating with them if you had any plans prior um, to coming to Emerson. If you would like to continue those accommodations and those resources, you can try for a semester and say, you know what, I feel ready. I don't think I need them anymore. And go fly solo. And if you're like, okay, I did it. You know, this is just what I needed, a little push to get myself situated. By all means, 
if you said next year, maybe, well, like this class really requires a lot of reading or there's a lot of discussion from the professor. I might want to have a little bit of support in this class. But you can go back and ask them, look, this class is really challenging in this way. There is a lot of oh, conversation and there's a lot of oh, PowerPoint and I would like a copy of those. Oh, can you please make sure that I have those resources? And by all means, they're going to be there to support you. So please always ask. And as I said, Chris and, and Dr. Thoppers, we're here to support you. So if you have any questions, this will be a wonderful time. I'm going to present my last questions to our panelists um, to close out the evening. And then if you have any other, please join me in asking them any questions that, that you might have at the moment. So a lot of the people that are joining us today, they're going to be making one of the most important decisions in their lifetime in the upcoming months. Um, and Emerson um, could be one of those options, and it is one of those options. So with the knowledge that you have today as a staff member, um, why would you choose Emerson today? Uh, and and you, any of you can jump in uh, when you feel ready. Chris, I normally take, I, I've taken the first crack at these answers. You want to go first? <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, I, I mean, either way, if you're, if you're ready, um, um, I, I, I can also go second. Um, I would choose Emerson today uh, mainly because if I was going through this college experience, just because of where it is and what we do, um, honestly, if I was going for something within arts and communications and knowing that I can go to a school that does that, I would go there. I would go here just because it had it's right in the middle of, of a city that is a manageable city. Um, it's not big and 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 all <laughs> I, I like to say both for Boston and Emerson. Um we're, we're we're small but have a big personality. <laughs> I think that's the best way to describe both Boston and Emerson. Boston is basically a big town. I mean, it is not a big city, um, not like New York or LA. Um, it's compact. It's compact size. It's bite size. Um, and uh, but the beauty of it, it has so much going on within it. Um, and especially if you're coming from a small town um, and looking to have more of a city life um, or if you're coming from a big city and want something a little bit smaller, Boston is sort of that perfect fit. Um, it's got a lot, a little bit of everything. Um, and I think that's what I'm um, really exciting about it. And also you're surrounded by other colleges as well. Um, college students are really the majority, it feels like, um, in the city like Boston, um, especially with 40 colleges and universities in the area. Um, there's students all over the place. And this is what people come here to do, to study education. Um, but our piece that we play within it, we're focused on arts. We're focusing on, um, on the magic of it and the creation of it. And I think a lot of people just see it just on the surface level. The people just see the tip of the iceberg and what you see on stage, on screen, in the papers, in magazines, and really don't understand the essence of what it takes to be able to get those words, to get those things, get those people up on the stage. And you all are it. You all are the people. You are the backbone of the very thing that our society really leans on. Um, we lost a lot of that during COVID. I think we lost a piece of ourselves because of the things that had to shut down as a result of that. And we saw how important it was and how important you are. And I think this is the reason why you come to a space like that. And it's like, you know what? We went through two years of putting that to the back burner because we needed to focus on health. Now we can we now we can go back at it and not only go back it, go back at it even stronger, but we can have a revolution and a renaissance within it. Now we can recognize what are the spaces and who are the people that need to be in these spaces. And I think that's the most exciting part. We recognize that there is a lack of diversity and we recognize that there is a lack of things that are available to students. And so we want to make sure that students um, are aware of we want you in those spaces. We are that bridge to get you into those spaces. Um, and so Come into that space knowing that you're not only going to meet some wonderful friends, but those are you're gonna those are gonna be your future colleagues. Those are the gonna people that you're going to be pulling up. And so that's that's what I would say that's the most exciting part um, about being here and during this time. Um, we are moving light years ahead, um, just in terms of the of um, 
sort of the next stages of arts and communications. And to be a part of that, man, um, that's that's something exciting. So we live vicariously through you. <laughs> Dr. Roberts and I don't uh, are not on stages, um, except for like maybe a webinar or something like that, or you know, talking and through conferences and things like that. But we can't do what you do. And we get to see you do your passion firsthand. Um, so I would say that's the reason to come. And uh, we're excited to to watch you flourish as a result of it. For me, um, I, when I was making my decision about where I wanted to go to college, I first of all, I, I wanted to focus on institutions have, that have a proven track record of success. So it didn't matter if the School of Engineering was really strong. If the School of Education was not strong, which was the one I needed to be a part of, then I didn't choose it. So let that be part of what you use as your barometer. Is there a proven track record? Can, can I accomplish what I want to accomplish there? Once you've got that, then you start thinking about the community. Because you can have the greatest dreams and they can have the programs and they can have the track record of success. But like I said earlier, if you have to sacrifice your spirit for it, or if you have to go into isolation mode, or if you have to constantly be in competitive mode in order to um, accomplish those dreams, is that something you're willing to do, right? One of the reasons why I would encourage you to think, to seriously get some thought about um, choosing Emerson is that it is small enough that you, you don't have to be a number. Now, some people are like, they just come in and they really just, they just, they go under the radar. They, you know, they just come in and go to their classes. Honestly, those students eventually hit a wall because that sense of isolation and that lack of belonging because they, because they were so um, reserved and they didn't tap into offices, they didn't tap into people, they didn't tap into organizations like Raiz or Ebony or Flawless Brown or any of the other um, um, organizations that we have here, they lost themselves. And so for me, choosing Emerson is a is is it could be a, a good choice for you. I, I can't say what would work, but for me, I would I would look at Emerson and see can I find myself? Can I find myself in the curriculum? Can I find myself in the clubs and organizations? Are there offices and individuals that I think could help me tap into something beyond, right? Beyond the classroom, beyond Boston. The campus is small enough that you can become connected. The campus is also large enough that you don't have to only stay here. There are people who are volunteering and uh, across Boston. We have a student, let me see, that student studied abroad twice and then spent their semester in LA at our campus there. They, they strategized, they spent time on our office, they, they figured out the funding, it did not disrupt their program. Um, they didn't have to spend any extra time here. Rebecca Dale, who um, works in the office that I'm a part of, I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna get the number wrong, but I'm gonna say she shared with um, the campus, I'm not sharing her business. <laughs> I think she shared that she studied abroad five times and six. never paid a dime. I was actually it was six, six, I remember, yeah. See, six times and didn't pay a dime. And her passion is finding opportunities, funding opportunities for students who are looking either for Fulbright or they're looking to um, one of the Global Pathways programs that I shared the link for above or there are non-Emerson um, sponsored programs that would allow you to go outside of the USA and still stay within your program. And she's a whiz at finding funding for that. And so that's why I say it's a small enough campus that you can find, build, or contribute to a community. And yet it's large enough that this doesn't have to become your everything. The Boston campus doesn't have to become your everything. You have opportunities to grow and to explore. Um, it is it is always beautiful to see students after they go to LA try to figure out do they want to move to LA? Is it do they want to you know start their career here in Boston, New York, where do they want to go? And and I'll just say this: there was a student last year who I met at a recruiting event who stayed in touch with me over the summer and has been in my office no less than five times already this school year. And it is a joy because they are finding themselves not only with their friend circles, 
but they have people that they, they're they are already tapping into um into our office to think about what they're going to do with their career right that what they're going to do with their education they're already connecting um i don't know if they're using emerge no 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 they tapped into a faculty member or a chair and now they have connections for for internships in the summer and so it's been beautiful to see this student come and not only find community for their education but to find community for things that they value and and that that are responding to to who they are as a person and their cultures and so um i that's why i say emerson I, I'll, just to sum it up emerson is small enough that you can find or build your community community but it's big enough that this doesn't have to become everything because we we have access to to open up other doors for you Thank you so much um, for those answers. Um, and it also adds a lot of value and context to, to the opportunities that they can find at Emerson. So I think with that, we're going to close the evening tonight. Um, there was one question, but you got to answer on the chat. Um, so I hope that that definitely helps. With this in mind, we are closing the Black History Month series. So once again, happy Black History Month. Um, we're on the eve of Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's to all of you as well um, that you get to celebrate. Um, not only is a love holiday, but also a friendship. So always share the love with those around you and those that need it the most um, at any point. So I encourage you to do that. Lastly, this is just one of many opportunities with you to engage with us at Emerson. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to have picture yourself at Emerson in about 11 days here in the Boston campus. Also, it's going to happen in April. We're going to continue to have webinars and picture yourself virtual um, during the mid-March. It's going to be coming up. So please pay attention um, to your email. Also visit the website and also we have class visits. So if you're ever in the Boston area or you want to visit Boston, you have opportunities to see classes, sit in one class and be able um, to experience what will be um, your future here at Emerson, visualize yourself. So I wish you a beautiful evening. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, and we hope that you stay in touch with us. Take care and be safe. Buenas noches.